I'm JD. Welcome to my channel. Please subscribe. Please hit like if you like what I'm doing. And here I'm showing you a San Martin. It looks a lot like a Tudor, but it's not a watch. It's an automatic. It's really nice. This video is not about reviewing this watch, but if you would like me to do a review on this watch, I will. What I kind of like about this watch too is, a, is the strap. It's very Tudor-esque, as you can see, even the case back is like a Rolex Tudor-esque. Solid end links, as you can see here, um, a machine strap. These are these studs are actually screws that go in here. They took a lot of time to do this. Um, stainless steel, what is it, 316 stainless steel. Anyway, a machine clasp on the back with the San Martin logo on it. it snaps in nicely. Up oh, there it is there. Beautiful, beautiful watch. Um, looks a lot like a Tudor Black Bay, I think. I like the coffee look on that watch. It is a 200 meter dive watch. It's got a screw in crown, which is very nice, and it sticks out just like the Tudor. So, beautiful watch. I think it runs around 350. It's around 350 for this watch. So, as I've said before, 350 Canadian, so that's like 10 bucks American, I think, somewhere along that. I love the lines on it, the edging. I think even if you look at this here, I'm not supposed to be doing a review on this. So see those lines right there? That's just beautiful what they've done there. So gorgeous watch. So anyway, that's not what we're talking about today. So I'm going to put this aside. I should put it on my wrist again. What we're going to do today is we're going to disassemble a can of mints. <laughs> so hope you've got a sense of humor out there. But if you've been watching my videos, you've seen this can of mints before. So the big debate here is gloves or no gloves. I've had people writing me in the last uh, week saying, you know, you look at some of the, the high-end watchmakers on YouTube that make watch parts and stuff like that, no gloves. They're not wearing gloves. I know that, that the professional watchmakers that are doing watches do wear finger cuts. Um, I have bought a whole box of 400 finger cuts. Have a look in there. More enough finger cuts to last me a lifetime, so I've done that. So I'm all finger cut it out. I'm not going to need to wear those finger cuts until I actually uh, reassemble the watch. So this is a, a beautiful old Waltham pocket watch. Um, I've been asked to have a look at that to see if I can get it working properly. Um, so what we're going to do today is we're going to disassemble this little puppy dog. Did I say disassemble? It's late in the day. We're going to disassemble this puppy dog. I just did a, a trump and made my own word up. I'm going to dissemble the watch and slur words until you guys get annoyed at me and turn the channel off. So I told you guys yesterday that uh, when I put a video out that uh, you got to be careful screwing one of these screw backs or case backs back in because you can cross thread it. You don't want to do that. So, so we're going to disassemble this watch um, and try to do it quickly and then we're going to put it into the cleaning uh, machine to give it a good clean. So, so I like to um, take this in pieces. Um, I need to deal with the face and the hands first. So I just put this on lightly if I can. Again, you don't want to cross thread anything. So just take your time. And that's not going to cost cross thread, but I don't need to do it anymore. So, so what the first thing I do is line the hands up for the watch. And I, I think I mentioned the way I open up the crown or turn the crown open is to hold the watch like this and push the watch back. And so you've got a very stable platform to do that with. So so there you go. I still say so a lot and I'm not sure why. But I'll take the face off the watch first and take those hands off so they get out of the way, right? And I have big hand removers. I don't have I have big hands too, by the way, but I have big hand removers. And you want to protect the watch while you're doing this. So you grab a piece Usually you grab a piece of plastic. I think I have a piece in here. Where is my plastic? Somebody move my plastic. Um, I'm going to have to entertain you while I'm looking for the plastic. So there. A little bit of entertainment. <laughs> and then I found the plastic. That was piss poor entertainment. So a little bit of plastic there. The other thing I also need to do is put on my very good watchmaker's glasses. These guys here. These are phenomenal, phenomenal with the airy loop. So I'm going to be very casual in today's discussion, by the way, because I've had a long day. I've been working all day, work, work, 
not watch work. So you're removing the watch hands. I got big A, big ass watch hand removers, I'll call them. B-A-W-H-R's. B-A-W-H-R's. And you don't need, as Mark says, who's a brilliant watchmaker, you don't need to put them in the center like that. You can just take the edge of this like that and then just leverage, lever them up like this. So the hand should come out right out like that. And then you can grab your plastic out of the way, very lightly grab those hands. And I always put those into the face like that. So I, first of all, I know where they are. And secondly, I know where they are. So the hand down here, you want to make sure you don't risk the pivot. Um, usually you don't have enough room to remove this with plastic, but this face won't scratch if I'm very careful. And sometimes I will actually use um, a screwdriver. I'll show you how I do that in a second because now this worked. No problem at all. There it is. So that's not going to scratch the face with these levers, with hand levers. So take the second hand here and then get that out of the way. So now I've got the hands out of the way, so I want to remove the movement. The movement. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to grab, I'm going to entertain you while I'm doing something. So this is the entertainment here. Okay, hopefully you're Hopefully you're incredibly entertained. And there, I'm at my Bergeron gelled watch movement holder. Gelled, folks. Gelled. So I got some news for you. Sunday, I'm buying another lathe. Yes, sirree. I'm buying another lathe. It's a peerless lathe, and it's got a tailstock with a pusher on it. And I was brave enough to tell my wife I was buying the lathe, because that's the kind of guy I am. I don't like to hide things. So I said, no. I said, I said, wife, so I always call her that fondly, I said, wife, I'm buying another lathe. Do I need to call a lawyer? <laughs> she said, no, but you better keep working. So anyway, so I'll, I'll do a video on the lathe. I'll clean it, and I'll do a cleaning video on the lathe. So here we go. We take the, the case back off again, put it out of the way. I'm not concerned with fingerprints because all this stuff is going to be cleaned later. Oh, and then by the way, if you look at this watch from years ago, some watchmaker left fingerprints. Look at that right there. I could pull that fingerprint and tell you what his name was. But I'm tired, so I'm not going to do that. So I want to get the right screwdriver here to remove this. And these screws are actually hard to find. If you lose one of these screws, it's not easy. So you turn those until you hear the little click and that's the thread is out so you don't have to worry about it anymore. And I put these in the case back. So just nice and lightly. I don't throw anything in there. Just lightly place that in the case back. And I'm re removing these and obviously one of them is different than the other which means that one of them was uh, not intended to be for that watch. Now when you take the movement out you have to make sure this is in a hand setting position which it was already. And you should just be able to move the movement up and then get it out of the way like that. Look at that. Amazing. And now I have the movement. And I just have a look and see what I got. I've got a lot of dirt. So a whole lot of dirt. Let me just zoom in here so you can get the dirt look. Look at the dirt. So that's a lot of stuff. That's dirt from a guy that was 100 years old. So I think I looked this watch up and it was like a... It was a Waltham from... 1918 or something so what i need to do is get a screwdriver in here sometimes there's an indent that you can get this under but i want to remove the dust cover yes sir bub that's what i'm going to do i can hear my wife opening the garage door is she going to run in here and say something so i just want to find a groove or just make a groove to remove this dust cover so very carefully looking around the edge of the watch to see if I can find a natural groove. Uh, there's something there, so that's not too bad. And you just wedge this, this in and just rotate it just a bit. And if you look on these watches, there's tabs. Right. Come on, focus. Don't make me a liar. There we go. You see that little tiny tab right there? That tab aligns with the movement and holds the dust cover in place. That is incredible what they've done here. So I just want to remove this like this very carefully, right? And one of the first things I'm going to do is take that balance off. 
and put it somewhere safe because I'll be cleaning that balance as well like I showed you in the last video how to clean a balance well I'm going to do that with this watch too uh, I'm trying to find a groove here the edge where is that edge this thing is eluding me there it is there and just slide along here to see if I can find it again there it is there it's the same color as the movement so it's it's finding a place to hide here now is it coming off yet let me see there we go hey this is the dust cover for the watch so that'll go into the cleaning machine as well and here I've got the balance I want to remove the balance nice and safely so I can get rid of it before I start taking other things off so I'll get that balance off and like I've said before when you're removing the screw for the balance you're be best off supporting the balance just a bit so I've got the Bergeron stick here it is the Bergeron 7010 poly polyamide or poly polyamide plastic stick very resistant watch tool whatever that means so I just need to put just not a lot of weight on that just a little tiny bit of weight I could put this in a movement holder but it's not really necessary yet and this is just prevent the balance cock from popping up while I'm unscrewing it I don't want it to do that I don't want the pivots to be damaged at all so I'll just put this aside I'm just putting it up here I know you can't see where up here is and then I need to take the balance off and put it on a balance tack so I do happen to have another balance tack here this one here might not be wide enough for this particular movement so if I look like that and I try to line it up it's just a bit too short so I'll tell you what I'm gonna do I'm gonna go get my I'm gonna go get my dunker tank I think all right I decided not to get the dunker tank so I'll show you what I got here these are movement holders that I've made so I made this one here it's got a little tray for holding the screw which is tray nice and it's got two tacks I think if I put the balance on this tack it'll sit there and the balance can rest here so I put the balance cock on here and it'll sit there and rest there I can try that if that doesn't fit I can use this tack right and the balance will hang on either one of the sides but I'm going to try this one first because I made these tacks a while back a while back I made these tacks see it rhymes so I want to make sure the balance is loose here first of all and it is and I'm going to grab the balance and I'm going to tip the movement so let me just get this out of the way here usually I have that in my Myers movement holder but I don't think there's gonna be a problem taking this out I just need to tip it and just make sure that it comes out of its position like that and then I think that it's gonna fit on the smaller one and then the balance can rest between those leaves there see that's a brilliant design and let me put that down and look at that folks so I want you to look at that this is six years of engineering <laughs> you're looking at six years of engineering the, sh the shame of, of the whole thing is it was electrical engineering so I shouldn't have anything to do with this right so there's the screw and and let me put that in there so that's the that stays right there now a smart man would put a piece of Rodico in that little tray too, right? That way the screw doesn't wander. So let me just put the screw outside, put the Rodico in the tray, Rodico in the tray, like that, and then put the screw on the Rodico. This is like there's a hole in the bottom of the sea, right? With that song from when I was a kid. And I'll just put all this, squish all this down like that. So there we go. There we go. So that's the balance, and it's in the tray. And now, because I'm again, I'm a good boy. Um, I just wanted to disassemble this watch because I didn't have time to reassemble the other one I was working on. But, but uh, so I want to put this on top so it doesn't collect any dust. But I'm going to put this way out of the way on my desk. It's, you notice that this thing also has nice little feet I bought, so it's nice, soft, cushy feet. So it's all brass. The tack that I, the two tacks I made, um, I did all of the, I basically turned those tacks into tacks. That's what I did. And I did it 
without any tax. Ha ha ha. So now I can start disassembling the watch. So I think I'm good. Let me see if I need to use this stick anymore. Probably not. So put your stuff away after you've used it. If you're not using it anymore, put it away because it's going to end up on your on your forearm and you're going to be pissed off. So, so I put the stick away. Very useful for holding that balance cock down just a bit so it doesn't get all aggravated and want to jump off. So the first thing I want to do is loosen some of these plates here because I want to take this plate off. And I, and I got to take this off in order anyway. So, And I got one of the wheels here. I think I'm going to have to get closer and dirtier. You know what? I'm going to need to get a number. I'm going to have to get a Myers movement holder, folks, to do this properly. Another thing I'm going to do is remove the face first. So somebody was probably yelling at the camera saying, JD, remove the face. For God's sakes, remove the face. So let me get my screwdriver in here and loosen that screw up. I usually loosen these up, these the, the screws that hold the face on. I loosen them up and then I tighten them after the face is off so I don't lose them. And these things haven't been loosened in a million years. But I always worry about, let me look inside here if I got a problem. So I always worry about stripping the screw or something and is that thing moving? All right, that one worried me because it's moving, so it's good. That one worried me. You got to put enough pressure on it for it to turn. You do not want to strip it, but these watches are so old. And I think I said online, the last watchmaker tightened that a lot. I think I said online, I was trying to find somebody who understood the word for dressing your screwdrivers. It was a term, right? I wanted to use. So I've got to. This dial is sunken slightly in here, right? So I want to be, take my smallest, smallest screwdriver and see if I can wedge that in the edge. I think there's a hole that allows me to wedge it in here. Let me see how I'm going to do this. You got to be super careful with these old watches, right? This is a, a huge opening on this side. Yeah, that might fall out, actually. Can I make that fall out? Not sure. Oh, it's falling out on this side, which is good. I can put the screwdriver in and just move it around to see if I can loosen the whole thing out from the dial feet. Get a different screwdriver and just put it in there nice and lightly. What you don't want to do is accidentally crack the dial while you're doing work on the watch. So, so I wish I would have left my fingernails a little bit longer. So I got this part of the dial is definitely out. And you want to make sure that I think it's just going to come out in my hand. Come on. Ah! One side comes out and the other side falls in again. There we go. I knew it would fall out. So you see the dial feet in there are good. So I've got three dial feet and they're all intact, no problem. Um, and I've got, yeah, I want to I want to take out a few parts of this watch. So so what I do with the dial is I rest it on top of the uh, on top of this. So I got the case back here, and I've got the dust cover, and I got the dial, and then I can take out the. Uh, the hour wheel. Just lift that straight out. And I mentioned some of the components of the hour wheel. I just set that down there. And I want to remove, I really want to remove the minute wheel if I can right now. And it usually just comes out. And there it is. The minute wheel's out. And then I want to pull a cannon pinion. You can do that a few ways. I have a cannon pinion puller, right? Or I can just do that. These smaller watches you can pull straight up and use leverage to pull the cannon pinion up. Uh, or I can use my cannon pinion puller, which looks like, can I get it for you quickly before you get bored? Oh, entertainment, entertainment, a little more entertainment. There we go. This is the cannon pinion puller. 
and it's got teeth like the Alien movie, right? So you do that, you put it over the cannon pinion, you pull this, it pulls it up and keeps it on the face. But these cannon pinions are notably small and they come off real easy. So you can use your screwdriver to pull up on that, or your, your uh, tweezers to pull up on that cannon pinion too without a problem. Now I gotta get my number 58 Myers movement holder because this pivot is sticking up and I gotta turn this around. I don't want this pivot to come in contact with this gel pad and make a hole in it. Looky, looky, I found myself another Myers number 58 movement holder. <clears throat> in fact, I have three of these. I hate to brag, but I have three of these. And these will cost you around 350 bucks US. They're not cheap. I think I found them for a lot less. So this one here, all these movement holders I have, I've worked on to polish them. So this is in, in pretty darn good shape. Uh, looks like I could work on the inside of that one a bit more, but... So I just have to change the this here, th these ends here, right? I just sl slide those in like that. And this is the world's best movement holder. Oh my God, these things are good. And then I can take this, this watch here, just press the button on the movement holder and slide it back a bit. And then take the movement and very carefully put this in place. So there's no lever set mechanisms on this watch or or anything crazy fancy like that so I should just be able to set this down like that squeeze it in a bit like this and then tighten my Myers number 58 movement holder tighten that up just a bit here and make sure the watch movement is in place now I can move my Bergeon gelled movement holder out of the way so there we go so there it is there um, I think I'll move my camera a little closer. All right, there we go. So now, now that I've got that back part all taken apart, I can take some of these plates off. And again, got to make sure that I get good contact with these wheels. So this one here is either backwards or not, right? One or the other. Doesn't want to go either way. So I'm gonna. I'm gonna try this screwdriver here. I can't remember whether this one is usually the screws are reversed on these things for some reason and then sometimes the older ones they're not and this one is not so the screw is coming out the normal way light righty tidy lefty loosey so I was putting a little pressure on it on in the reverse way it moved ever so slightly which tightened it some more and then I, then I knew it wasn't going to go anymore, so I turned it the other way. So, My big fear in doing this work, in this case here, is actually, there's another piece of metal on top there, um, but I'll just leave it like that for now. The big fear is stripping a screw or the screw head actually comes off. So this is some of the risk that you take when you get these things maintained. So that's why I, uh, I try to be very careful with it. But. This is actually, was actually loose. This one was loose already, which is not usually good, but I'll just put that aside here too. And I'm just lining that up in the mat in the front. And then I should be able to just take this out even though there's a click spring here in the way. Maybe I move the click spring out of the way. And what do I do? I got a couple of screwdrivers here that can help me. So I can move this click spring out of the way very carefully. All right, that's not carefully enough. I want to. I want to get a needle or a probe. What will I use here? I'm going to use a probe. I'm going to use a probe. I should have entertained you while I was over there. So this would normally go in like that and click like this. So I just move that out of the way with this little probe I have. This was one of these Michaels hobby store probes it's pretty good the, this here I think you should buy one of these because they're excellent for actually just tapping the uh, pivots into place on full plate pocket watches and that's a job and a half sometimes you you get better at it as you get older um, and sometimes you you it just it's just those pivots just don't want to go right so so here I'm just gonna seat work on this plate here and remove that I'm gonna put a little more light on this see if I can get a little more light on that Is that better not sure whether the camera readjusts the lighting on here but 
So I've got one, two, three screws. I usually leave the click spring in place and just put it through the wash machine like the way it is. So there are the three screws. I look and see if the screws are the same type so that when I remove this other plate, I can tell whether I've got a problem with the screws. So, and those folks that follow my watchmaking videos, um, it's easier to do the work on the watch and then overdub it because you're not talking while you're working. Um, but I've kind of got used to chatting while I was working. So, so it's not as that bad for me. These are loose. This was loose too. So this, so it, in another case here, I should have had my holder out, but I'll just put my dirty finger on here. So, and this is getting clean, remember, so don't worry about it. And so the plate's off now, so I should be able to lift this straight up, right, N without a problem. Let me see if I can do that. There we go. So there the plate is out, which is nice. And I'll set that aside with the screws, and I'll show you what that, all that looks like after. And now what I do is usually I take a picture of all this. So I need a picture of the mechanism. Like, ah, i got to get my phone. I'll be right back. All right, I took a picture of this, and especially the setting mechanism. I worked on one of these before because I remember taking this part apart and trying to put it back together again. I got a cough. Hang on. All right, I'm back. I may have to cough again in a second, but at least I'm back this time. So this thing, I think I have to take this apart in order to uh, take this out. So <clears throat> I'm not sure what <clears throat> dangerous chemicals are in my watch repair room, but I always cough when I'm in here. So I'm taking the gears out right now. <clears throat> That's the center wheel and its pinion. And I can slide the mainspring out usually. There we go. And we'll be taking this apart, which is a big pain in the butt, but we got to do it. You know the rules. And then this wheel can't come out, I don't think, until I get the other one out, So or until I get this plate off. So I'm going to do that first. Foist. I'm going to do it foist. The, the screws are nice on this thing because they're all blued screws, which is nice. They, they blew them. They're blued. Let's take a look. My screwdriver is just the right size. You want to make sure your screwdriver, again, Goldilocks and the Three Bears, you want to make sure your screwdriver is exactly the right size for the slot. Like when I was trying to take out that that wheel, uh, the crown wheel, I think, um, the screwdriver was too small first. So I got a bigger screwdriver. It fit into the screw nicely, and I could torque it without having to worry too much. So, and again here, I should have a little weight on the plate because I don't want the pivots to get in to move at all. It's pretty anal, but I don't want the pivots to move while I'm taking the screws off. So I get my famous, famous Bergeron device, right? It even says Bergeron on it. Not cheap. Look at Bergeron is Swiss for not cheap, okay? Everything you buy that's Bergeron will cost a fortune, but it's good quality. So you want to work on watches, pocket watches. You want to make sure the quality of your tools are up there. They're up there, mister. Now, I want to rotate this to attack it properly. So I'm going to just press this and move it back a bit. And then rotate this here. And then put it back in. <clears throat> I remember years ago when I first started working on pocket watches, I was pretty afraid of stuff. I was a scared, Jerry. I was a scared. So, let's see if that's loose. Yeah, that's loose. So I should be able to pick that straight up. Let me find a safe place to go in with my... Uh, and we're going to go straight up. Look at that. And that just makes sure, like, you've got a donut. The pivot's a donut. And you've got the... Sorry, the jewel's a donut. The pivot goes into that jewel. And if you lift it at an angle, there's a chance you could snap the pivot. So you, lifting it straight up is the only way for success. So and when I do work on... I try to lift this up here. I'll lift it from the pinion, right? And then I'll drop it onto my mat. No, it's okay. I'll lift it from the pinion straight up. That's the fourth wheel here, which is the wheel that the second hand is on. So I've re-pivoted fourth wheels. There's a, a gentleman in British Columbia, Canada, that I re-pivoted a fourth wheel for. I'm, I'm hoping that when he snipped the, snipped the end off, because it was nicely working, that it's the right size and working properly. So... 
And again, I got to use my little stick again because I know when I take the um, when I take the bridge off for the um, pallet fork, it's, I got to get in close to. It's going to want to bounce up. So I just loosen that up like that, and I'm just going to loosen the other one at the same time. Usually I do them individually, but I'm down here now, and I want to make sure I get them done properly. Okay, so both those, now you, you saw how that the bridge didn't move. So the way that, the reason they call the bounce cock the bounce cock is because it's not a bridge, right? And <clears throat> it's it just is the screws on one side of the bounce cock. So it ain't a bridge. Now I want to remove this and I want to go straight up again and pay attention to the pallet fork as I'm doing this. I can usually grab the screw holes here and help me lift it. So the pallet fork is actually stuck onto this thing. So I think we can remove that after. Um, let me just look at this here. Yeah, I want to pop, I want to pull that out of the jewel hole. Right, so you can see it sitting there on the bottom of my screen. Now, if I'm lucky, I can actually go in here and just grab the there we go, lift that out of the bridge and just set it down here. Now, the pallet fork I always put aside because I don't put that in the cleaning machine, and the reason why is the shellac to hold the jewels on could loosen up now there are different opinions but i i'm i'm going to take mine <laughs> so i'm going to take another picture of this because i know they're a pain in the butt to get back together again and i don't want to lose the parts there we go and i might take a picture from the other side too and that way i've got both sides of this thing and putting it back together is not easy there's the other side but I'm going to take my time when I disassemble this and take my time when I put it back together. Take another photo. Zoom in. There we go. Another photo. There we're good. So I've taken a couple of photos of this. So I'm pretty satisfied that I know what's going on. So i got to disassemble this for cleaning. And <clears throat> the, the, okay, the hard part right here is that spring. You do not want that spring to take off. There's friction on one side and friction on the other side. When I take this plate off the top here, right, that little plate right there, that's, that spring is going to want to go flying, right? So the best thing for the, to do to prevent a spring from sprunging, again, man's best friend, is not, not duct tape. It's Rodico. So I take a little bit of Rodico here, and you want to press that onto the face right where the base of that spring is. And that way the spring does not take off on you. It doesn't decide to go south and to your neighbor's house. So so I do that and then I'm going to grab a black. I think black is the right size screwdriver for this. And I'm just going to take a look at this configuration of it. Yeah, it's a pretty cool configuration. I wonder if I can get another close-up picture of this. Yeah, right there. That's the picture. I want. There you go. So I just took another pic. Oh, entertainment, entertainment. Okay, I just took another picture of it just so I can make sure I know where it's going to go. And look at that. It's loose. Not good. It's probably causing some of the winding issues on this watch. And pick that up, and now you can have a look and see. I'm going to make sure these screws are together on my desk, and I'll show you that in a second. But you can see the configuration of this winding mechanism. You can see that? And it's a bit tricky, and you don't want that spring to fly out, okay? So I need to actually move that the spring out of the way. I can grab this part here. I think this will just come out without a problem. And I can grab the spring out of the way. And, and then take note of the, of the way it goes back in. So I know it goes in like that, and it's not 100%. Uh, this one looks a little bit symmetrical. So I'm going to take another picture of this because I want to look at it later and say, well, what was bigger, this one end or this end? 
And I can tell right now for the spring that this end here, let me get this camera focused here. I can tell that this end is a bit longer than this end on the spring. So I want to make sure when I install it again, it's like that. And I have done one of these before, these mechanisms before, just recently, I think, because I recall, I recall the spring issue. And this here needs to come out the other way, I think. So I need to loosen the screw on the other side. I don't remove this bar, by the way. I leave that in. And I may, in fact, leave this in place instead of unscrewing it. There are certain parts of the of vintage pocket watches you don't want to risk removing uh, because you'll likely lose it. Okay, so this bar actually just sits on that screw. So it's not even screwed in. It just sits on the screw. I totally forgot that. That means that screw... Yeah, that screw just stays in place there, so... Can I remove this yet? No, i got to remove the, the, the head on the other end. You can see how difficult it's going to be to to actually reassemble the setting mechanism. That's the hardest part of this whole job. But you got to be brave, okay? The whole thing just fell through. So there's what fell through. The stem just fell. That's all good. Right, this fell through here this part and this is one piece I'll just put this over with the rest of it here's the stem and I can take this apart I, I kind of know it goes like that but we're I don't need to take a picture I think I've got enough pictures of this already but this comes out like this and then this comes out on the other side yeah I know this is going to be a job and a half um, putting that back together again so let's just grab that probably be an hour on its own and then this screw here is part of this plate here right and that just came out which is supposed to and then this wheel on the bottom should also come out I'm taking a picture of this because I'm gonna go where does this wheel go so it's really small oh my god Oh my God, stop with the humor, buddy. All right, so that goes on there. And I'm gonna look at if there's any bevel on this wheel. I don't think there is. No. So that's with this, and this is with this, and this is with this part right here. And I think that part just pushes out. Yeah, there we go. And that's that part there. I got the screws all matched up, I think. That part like that. All right. And there's the plate. And we're good as gold, baby. Strip down. Strip down. So I'm going to back up and have a look at what I got. Camp down late. He sings that song. Do-da, do-da. Repairing watches all day long. Oh, do-da day. So here's a lower plate. There's the face. I'll clean that up. With fresh Rodico later, there's two screws that are for the movement, for holding the movement. In here I've got the hands and the pallet fork I'll clean separately. This is the gold case. I'll likely clean that with um, with, uh, with lighter fluid. And, and this here is a stem that I might have to adjust the depth of it. So I'm going to have to look at that. Goes in like this, turns like this but it wasn't interacting with the watch well enough to be able to to wind it while it was all the way in which means I have to somehow adjust the depth which means I have to take the crown off and do work on that so so that's that um, the last thing I need to do here which is oh joy oh joy is take out the mainspring so these old mainsprings don't drop it don't oh there you go I just answered my question so this <laughs> mainspring, the barrel just fell out of the mainspring. So this is not, this was not in very good. So I'll have to look at the hook on the mainspring. But I also want to take some photos of this. Too late. Because I wanted to make sure I knew which way this went in. But I can figure that out after. So I think it goes in like this. Like that. And then this goes in like this on top. So I'll just take a picture of this really quickly. Again, it just saves me time, that's all. 
And I know f by looking at what just happened, how hard that's going to be to put back together again. And the mainspring is clockwise, which is nice. And if I look inside the barrel, yeah, it's super dirty. So there it is. There's the mainspring barrel with the mainspring. Super dirty. I should be able to grab this mainspring and then pull it out. So to do that, you have to get your thumbs in there. So let me get my thumb in here. Now, a couple of days ago, I had some really good thumbnails that would have worked perfectly for this. And I decided to be a good boy and cut them down. So now I have to use my thumbs. So you just put your thumbs in here and then walk the mainspring out like this. Like that, like that. And it looks like it's set a bit. But what I'll do is when I reassemble the watch, I test it for its amplitude. <clears throat> and if the amplitude is fine, I can reuse the same mainspring. And this one has, as you can see, it has a little hole on the end, a square hole, which means the barrel has a hook on the inside. Let me just throw this on top of everything here, like that, which means the barrel has a hook on the inside. Where is that hook? Uh, there it is by my thumb. So the barrel hook is right, right, right there. So there's the barrel hook right here. So if I give you some camera vision, you can see the barrel hook on the bottom there. Yeah, that's the barrel hook. So we're going to wash that. I'm going to get put this in the right place. Wash all this stuff here. These are a little, the barrels are a little harder to put back together usually because you got to put them in and then turn them as you're doing that. So what I want to do is make sure that everything's got a home for, for washing. So I'm going to take out the cage here, or the cage, it's not the cage, Nicholas Cage. <clears throat> Somebody wanted me to do the Nicholas Cage impression there today at work. I'm not a vampire. I'm not a vampire. That's my Nicholas Cage. So I want to fill this up with goodies, okay? So what I'm going to do is fill the bottom one up first. One, two, and three. This is aluminum, so I'm not worried about it getting magnetic, but I'm going to fill the bottom up first. You do not put the face in there. So I'm just going to move all this over. I want to put the ring in there though, but I don't want to put, I want to put the dust ring in, but I don't want to put the face in. So, and I want to make sure it all fits. So I'll put the face in the case back and put the case back on top of the case. And then I just want to put the dust ring in. Can I put this in here and then put the dust ring over top of it? Got to make sure it all fits, folks. Got to make sure it all fits. That's not too bad. I'll just offset it a bit. And I want to put this plate in then. So, like this. I got this watch that I bought for $3 on AliExpress. And every now and then it makes a noise. It goes beep. I'm like, why is it making this noise? And I want to put that plate in there like that. So that's perfect. And I can throw my mainspring barrel in there, which I usually do when I'm cleaning these watches. And I can throw the top or bottom, depending on what you want to say there, of the mainspring barrel in here. And do I want to put the arbor in? I think I can put the arbor in here. Yeah, the arbors are tough, so you don't have to worry about them. And now I can take this mainspring and tuck it right in like that. That's perfect. And then this goes on top like this. But it's got the individual holders for parts, right? So let's get some of these out of here and fill them up. I'll show you how I fill them up. Now you notice I cut my fingernails on one hand for playing guitar and I cut my let, let them long on this hand and cut on this hand so I can get some nice finger plucking motion going on, which I like to do. So there. So I've got to pop these barrels open or these cake little tiny cages open so the small stuff gets grouped in there and I want to make sure that uh, I group things in there that don't care about each other so I can put this stuff can all go in here Let's see one two it's all the setting mechanism and that spring there and this screw right perfect size and this plate here perfect size and this plate here perfect size. I can even throw some of this stuff in there, but I got a couple more of these, so let me just see if I can 
optimize my spread out here. Uh, yeah, I think so. So put that one in there. That's one. Make sure it's closed. And then get this one out. These are great uh, baskets for watchmaking. So I've got really small screw here that's part of this. I didn't want to put that in with the other one because it's for this plate here, or this part here. And you mix the screws up and then you got to find which screw went with what. But I can put this in here. That's called the crown wheel, I believe. And there's the stem. Fits in perfectly. Is there anything else I want to put in here? I don't think so. So that's that's a good little grouping of stuff. <laughs> I'm talking like a two-year-old. And I'll put it on the other side. <clears throat> I want to make sure they're filled. They're all filled up so the weight is the same as this spins in the watch cleaning machine. It does some spinning. So I've got the two screws here and I've got the bridge for the pallet fork I can put in here for cleaning like that and then I think I might be able to put the uh, ratchet wheel in here right you think now I know that the ratchet wheel has got two parts so part one and part two but I don't think part one is separating from part two maybe it's just one part I don't think so I think the ratchet wheel has got two parts Maybe not. Let me have a closer look here at this ratchet wheel and see what's going on. Now, let me see if I can separate this top part from the bottom part of the ratchet wheel. There we go. Separated. So I knew there was two parts there. And I can throw those. I can throw them in here, but I can throw them over here somewhere. So let me see. if I, Where do I want to put that? Put that over here because I want to put my gears in here too. I can throw the ratchet wheel in here and then I want to put the ratchet wheel screw in there right and I want to make sure that the cage is not big enough to lose that screw <coughs> which it isn't so it's all good and then I want to throw this wheel here and I want to again same thing I did before because this watch is so old these parts are not going to want to separate without a little help so take those apart here and I can grab this and put them on the other side. I'm going for balance here, as you can see, and put the screw in with it. And then I've got a whole whack of screws here that I could probably put in one of these things, right? But let me get the wheels in first. I think I'll put, I'm going to put this in here. Um, yeah, I'll throw that in there. And Throw the cannon pinion in there too. That'll all wash up nicely. And put the top on that. The top. And then throw that in the cage. Make sure it's closed. And then I take this one here. Like that. Now when I'm finished cleaning this watch, I'll be for sure. Let me see if these screws all look the same. I want to see if they're all the same. I put these together. Gotta go in close here and see if the plate screws are the same. Yeah. You know what? Let I me mean, look at this screw here compared to that screw. And then this screw here. They all look slightly different, but I don't think they are. It's the depth of them. No, they're all pretty much the same. So I'm going to throw them all in here so that for a good scrub-a-dub-dub. -dub. Four screws in a tub. That's actually five screws. So that's that. Um, <clears throat> I do have the escapement wheel, but I don't want to throw that in with any of these screws because it will not do well. So I want to just leave that out like that. And it's dainty. The escapement wheel is dainty. So... So I want to make sure that that escapement wheel is safe. So I'm going to put the escapement wheel, let's see how dirty that thing is. And I'm going to put that right in here. That's pretty wide though. I'm just going to put that in somewhere else. I don't want it hitting against anything though. So but I know I can take these wheels and put them pivot down in here. And in separate holding tanks. Let me have a look at this. And this is one old watch. 
and this one here is the ah uh, that's the that this wheel I don't want to get loose at all. So I want this on its own as well. And I don't care if the if the pivots fall through the holes, it doesn't bother me. There we go. That that should do there. And then I can put that on top of here. Yeah, so something I don't like is the fact that this pivot is interacting. The pivot on the bottom of this is interacting with those containers. Even though that when it's finally in there, good, there shouldn't be an issue. So I'm going to see if I can find a home for this in one of these. <clears throat> I could give it its own little cage and just dump those screws. So what did I do? I did four screws. So there's four screws here. And what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to dump the screws into one of these containers. here, Like that. That's five screws actually. And then I'm going to use this here for the, for the escapement. Because I want the escapement is very small, right? So I want that to be safe. Yeah, that's much better. Much better in there. So on its own little container. There we go. And I just threw the screws in there because they'll be fine in there. And then I go like this, right? And everything should be good here. This goes on top like this. Like this. Okay, I'm going to leave it just like this. And then I get the frame out. And this goes on top. And I, I put the smooth side of this on here like that. And then the whole thing goes in. Now i got to very carefully lower this. Because I don't want to lose it when I'm lowering it. Get it to the open air and then straight down. Like that. Just like that. There we go. And I'm looking for gaps in the edge of this. So when I'm making sure there's no gaps on the edge of this for... Any parts I put independently in there, I didn't really put any parts independently in there, so that should sit nicely into the watch cleaning machine. Uh, and I bring that, I put that in a box I bought for my charger, for my iPhone charger, and I just put it in there so all these components are safe, right? That's where this goes, and then this stuff here goes into another watch pin. So I'm going to go grab one of these. Entertainment, 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 entertainment. Oh, I'm back. There we go. Another one of these. I've got a slew of these. A slew is more than two. I think I've got ten of these, maybe, or more. I just bought a whole whack. I never wanted a whole whack is more than a slew and more than two. So there you go. There's your math on that. So, so I, I've got this here, and I'll put this aside like that and this watch will be cleaned tomorrow because I'm tired right now it's almost five o'clock and it's been a long day and I'm going to put my Myers number 58 movement holder and just put it away and again I'll be pulling the tools out later and I've got another box with another Myers but it's tucked away somewhere so not worried about that so that's it so we're all ready to rock and roll entertainment entertainment so I'm JD Welcome to my channel. That's stripping down an old vintage pocket watch. You can reach me at jdwatchservice at gmail.com. Uh, like I said before, if you're not talking while you're disassembling a watch, it's probably more relaxing and then I dub it over. But I kind of like to talk about what I'm up to as I'm disassembling it. So, And then, uh, you know, try not to make any mistakes as you're doing it. Definitely don't damage any parts because you'll have to buy new ones and pay for it. So and it'll be me that has to pay for it. So it's uh, not a very good watch repair uh, business, hobby, or whatever you want to call it, if I'm paying for parts I don't want to pay for. So there you go. Man's best friend, Radico. So I'll see you next time. And uh, please stay safe, please. And if you're interested in watch repair, you can send me a note. If you're interested in, uh, in my videos and stuff, uh, send me a note. Just while you're here, I'm going to do a call out to a few people that have been responding to my videos I got my phone out here and I'm going to open up my tube of you and just say hi to a few people so yeah Sunny Morehouse so Sunny 
man thanks for all the comments uh you're a cool dude i love your comments you're a nice guy i can tell i'm looking down the list of stuff here of comments on so sonny has got a few in here about pressing in jewels um yeah and he's got a good staking set for doing that he's got a reverso set which is really nice uh, Paul Breeden, bonjour, he says. So is he French or does he pretend he's French? So thanks for the comments, Paul. You've done it a few times. A guy named Things I Do said thank you. And that was for the uh, proper cleaning of a watch uh, balance. So that's I did a really good cleaning video on no cleaning watch balance. Um, and this Gary Rein, Reinfuss, Reinfuss um, he is saying we're both right <laughs> with respect to dressing screwdrivers uh chrono best he said i disagree and will stand by my choice of word however if you wish to put dresses on your drivers <laughs> on your drivers i won't mock you so that's pretty funny that's a funny comment uh gary reinfuss again he's made a few comments on here i got some rodico stuck on here and then um avenger angel writes me every now and then uh, he was writing about the uh, finger cots and saying that, speaking of finger cots, I'm surprised that Master Watchmaker on YouTube, Stefan Paolo, does not use finger cots. There you go. So, uh, let me see. Rick Denny, yep. Alan Wardell. Um, it's called Dressing Your Screwdrivers, I think. He's absolutely, he wins the prize, man. Daryl Nahoney, Nahorny? Uh... Anyway, he's thinking the word was truing the screwdrivers. So Mr. Echoes wrote me. Um, there's a bunch of guys here that, oh, CS Spinner. i got to thank Mr. Spinner. Uh, CS Spinner Watch Restorations. Go watch his videos as well. He's a good guy. He makes them probably a little more professionally than I do. Um, and basically he says uh, he loves the kind of traces I had on my, uh, my timing machine because uh, it looked pretty good, so it should come back pretty good. Uh, anyway, John Armsby's written me quite a few times. Uh, Tim R. W. Gary Edwards, thank you very much for your comments. Uh, Rick uh, Kunian uh, wrote me, very nice, talking about electrical engineers, <laughs> which is kind of funny. Uh, Kevin Smith wrote a few things. He said he's 73. I told him I got problems, I think, with my hips or something. But he's he was commenting on my, my music video where he said my vibrato on my string was a bit fast. It sounded too much like BB King and not enough like Santana. He's probably right. I got to go look at that again. Anyway, those are some of the folks. Uh, Colin Banfield has written me recently. He's thanking me for my videos. Bubba Smith. So Bubba Smith has written me a lot over the years. Really good guy. And thanks a lot. And who else is in here? I'm trying to find lens lens spalling too. Just say no to doctors. Um, I'm looking for the gentleman who did my, I did the Franken watch with Joseph. So Joe Hickok, I got to finish your watch, Joe. Um, I'm ready to do that tomorrow. Put that thing together. It's all ready. It's clean. It's ready to go together. So we're good. Uh, and I've put most of it together. I just have to put the balance in. I think it's got to going to have a good amplitude. So we'll get that back to you pretty soon. Bubba Smith, uh, da -da -da -da, Rick Denny, and see if there's anybody else here. Sunny Morehouse. I'm looking for. A specific one here. Uh, my friend Jim Corvessis wrote me. He's a good friend of mine and said thank you. He likes my work, I think. J Jow Jowetter Cars. J O W E T T C A R S, whoever that is. Mr. Hendrix Hendrix Forever actually is commenting on watch repair. So Bart C. Wow. Actually he liked my guitar playing. So these are some of the people that have written me. Uh, Norman B. Uh, a lot of people, I, I really enjoy your comments, so thanks a lot for uh, for commenting, and uh, <clears throat> I'll catch you next, next time. And I know the gentleman who wrote me uh, about the Franken watch, which still is his best running pocket watch that I repaired, but probably about two years ago. For some reason, I can't remember your name. Why can I not remember your name? I'm an idiot. And you're going to write me, and I'm going to go, oh, that's it. Anyway, so a shout out to him. He knows who he is, so. So thanks a lot for watching my channel, and I'll catch you next time.